Jordy, Zoe, Meg and I went to Melbourne for four days for the Euros tour and to hang out. And I spent a lot of my spare time wandering bookstores. like that fish from Finding Nemo. Yeah, I had two of them. After a sandwich to fuel me, we first looked in the Brunswick Street Bookstore, which is a historical sign now due to this image. I ended up picking a few ones up from here. So it's her entire journal and then she'll have this essays in Spanish. Really? And she just all the artworks and they keep going because there's more colour coming. This is the analysis but there's the That's her Spanish. That's it. It's gorgeous. The second one I checked was Paperback Bookstore, another independent, another gem. Uh, my favourite book at the moment uh, that I recently finished is called The Trio and I found it here. I would recommend it to anyone, especially if you like Sally Rooney. I've also found myself drawn to the recipe book section recently, and I found this gorgeous illustrated one. It was too much for my budget right now, so I just ended up reading it there. Milk fed. Uh, I, it was the first book I saw when I went into the first bookstore. I'm obviously late to the party with this one. Um, none of my friends have it, so I haven't been able to borrow it off them. So I guess they'll be borrowing it off me. Um, second one at the pond. It's about um, the Hampstead Ladies Pond, which is in London. I've never been, um, but I really like wild swimming and the concept of it. Um, I believe this is essays. So it's got a heap of it's got a heap of authors on the back. Um, in these essays, we see the pond from the perspectives of writers who have swum there. Esther Freud describes the life-affirming sensation of swimming through the seasons. Lou Stoppard pays tribute to the winter swimmers who break the ice. Margaret Drabble reflects on the golden hamster days of her youth. Charlene Taylor visits for the first time and Neil Frizzell shares the view from her yellow lifeguard's canoe. It kind of reminds me of My Place, an Australian series that I watched when I was growing up. It, it was just about this tree over a hundred years and it told a story like five years on from each other. So from colonization, there was an indigenous story before colonization, then um, con convict stories, then people in the 80s, and then all the way to 2008. So it kind of reminds me of that. That was like my favorite show. There's a cute little, I like that. I also love this cover, it's gorgeous. Uh, these are Susan Sontag's first essays. Her name's just been coming up a lot. Um, it was time to read her. Um, I'm a big fan of Joe Didion, Bell Hooks, and Eve Babbitt. They're like my three fa uh, favorite female authors at the moment. Um, so I was looking for more female, uh, some older established female writers, I guess. I don't read essays front to back. So I started reading number three, Camus notes, um, Camus's notebooks which is good, it's about, like so far, it, it's about love, which is interesting because I recently finished Bell Hooks all about love and I can see the correlations there, which I'm really enjoying. So I'm keen to just take this one one at a time, I guess. But yeah, this is my first Susan Sontag. Next one is, so I've got two books by Rachel Cusk. Um, so I've read a few of her books before. 
Uh, I've liked most of them, um, which is why I'm still buying her books. Um, I didn't, I think it was uh, The Last Supper, I found a bit slow. Um, but this one, um, these ones intrigued me. This is about motherhood, which I like reading about. Um, and this is about a lot of just mundane experiences and people's lives, I guess. Writes fearlessly of the untrammeled anger, boredom, and small significant epiphanies. So that's what these two are. Eve Pabbitts. I haven't been able to find this book in a while, and I, I could have bought it online, but I like going to independent bookstores if I can. So I'm really happy I found this one this time. It's uh, Black Swans by Eve Babbitts. Last book is Sagittarius. I saw the title first. I'm not a Sagittarius, but I have Sagittarius placements. Um, and then I read the blurb, which I'm gonna read, I guess, because I think it explains it better. A domineering mother moves from a small town to the suburbs of a city with her daughter and son-in-law, yet soon grows restless in her new life. When she strikes up a friendship with the mysterious Scylla, her world suddenly seems rich with potential and before long the pair are planning to open an art gallery together. After a series of afternoons spent over coffee, granitas and local bars, however, it quickly becomes apparent and there is more to Priscilla than meets the eye. Class, in all its manifestations and aspirations, is at the heart of Sagittarius, as misplaced confidence and ambition gone awry leads inexplorably towards the downfall of a family. So that's Sagittarius. So I've got to say, Meg's just arrived home. She is a, she's a Sagittarius. What have you got? I got a Meg's pickle. home. A piccolo, yeah? Oh, sweet. Looks so good. Yum, and then pickle. Cute.